Sup everyone, welcome back to the Mojito channel. First video of 2021 because 2020 just ended. This is the time for me to make my list of my favorite albums. This year I'm doing things differently. I'm going to do a top 10 with just be this video and after I'm going to do another video with all the honorable mentions. I've selected 50 to make a top 50 but this video is just the top 10 and you will have the 40 remaining albums in I don't know a week or two. So without further ado let's start at number 10 with clipping and visions of bodies being burned. This album, as you may guess by the cover, is kind of like the twin brother of There Existed an Addiction to Blood. It was released one year later, but it's kind of like when System of a Down did like uh, Mesmerize and then Hypnotize. You know, they were uh, recorded at the same time, kind of the same mindset. And you can tell they're quite similar. So of course, I'm going to do a lot of comparisons to There Existed an Addiction to Blood. So you can watch my review of that album in the top albums of 2019, that video I did one year ago. Is Visions of Bodies Being Burned as good as There Existed an Addiction to Blood, in my opinion? No, but it's close. One side that I did not like as much as before is the lyrics. Visions of Bodies Being Burned does not really contain anything as brilliant as Club Down or as fun as Cynthia strolling through the moonlight. There's one song that I really like the lyrics of that's Spain Every Day. The musical side though, it's, um, it's more daring. It's more uh, inventive, probably a little more original and experimental. Sometimes it gets too experimental for its own sake. There existed an addiction to blood was an experimental rap album that was really coherent and this album is kind of like experimental music with the rap vocals slapped on top but there's not a lot of glue that holds them together. The rapping and the, the instrumental music were really tight, really woven together in um, There Existed an Addiction to Blood. And in this album, not quite as much, except in a few songs. But yeah, I would say it's more daring on the musical side. There's a song called Enlacing, where they do something that is quite different than what they've done before. I really love the bass on, uh, what's the name of the song? Check the Lock, I think. Basically, that's my review. It's not as good as There Existed an Addiction to Blood, but it's pretty damn close. Number nine, it's something weird for a change. The name of the album is WFLYTD by Six Impala. It's like a hundred jacks, but good. It's a very fun album. It's very playful. The last track in the album is even some sort of game show. So yeah, there's a really game feel to it. Playful, fun. That's what it is. It's kind of like some kind of collage of a lot of different things that should not go together, but somehow they do. And there's a lot of uh, experimentation going on uh, in, in there. Like in uh, the second track, Toy Cars, one of my favorite tracks, there's a bunch of times when the music just stops and then it sort of starts again. Kind of like a toy car. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you can tell that the guys who made this album had lots of fun. Really, it's so original that it becomes kind of hard to describe because I don't have a lot of things to compare it to. It doesn't sound at all like Frank Zappa, but I can feel the same intent in there. Uh, it's the same building blocks. Frank Zappa had an album that was called does humor belong in music? This could be the title of this album. Maybe it is, maybe the letters are some cryptic message. I don't know what the letters mean. But yeah, Frank Zappa made funny music, but he did it really well. It was not only funny, it was also good music. And in my opinion, this album is the same. It's funny, it's wacky, it's kind of like shit posting in album form. But it's also well made, it sounds good, it's musically interesting. If you like music, if you like fun, you should listen to this. Number 8 is uh, Erratics and Unconformities by Craven 
faults. I can summarize this album with one word, hypnotic. It is extremely repetitive, but in the best possible way. Not an ambient album, but it has a lot of ambient vibe. And it's not really a minimal techno album, but it has the minimal techno sound. It's basically these very elegant synthesizers that make these really hypnotic loops and there's some subdued beats in the background sometimes. Sometimes it's just a synth and it's just yeah, you get lost into it. If you like minimal electronic, it's so fucking good. The next album is Polysom by... Oh shit, the name of the band. Chiron Semicolon Irse! Exclamation mark. And if I understood correctly, this name has no meaning. It's kind of like haagen Hagendas is just random letters, and the guys who created the ice cream company wanted a, a name that sounded cool, so they just, like, a, apparently it's the same thing. Who cares? The album's called Poly Somn, and it's, it's a blend of progressive and psychedelic uh, rock music. I think it's kind of like a happy medium between the Mars Volta and Pink Floyd. This album has, in my opinion, a lot of surprises. Like, there's a lot of unexpected things that happen in there. And yeah, it's very psychedelic, if you like psychedelic stuff. And it's not exactly space rock, but it's kind of like when some people describe music as stuff that was made in space, I think this is the kind of music they're thinking about. The one thing that I was not a huge fan of are the vocals. They're very spacey and very ethereal. I would have preferred the, the vocals to have some punch at some specific points. The singer uh, reminds me a little of Matt Bellamy, actually, and the music is reminiscent of Muse in some aspects. A very spacey, psychedelic version of Muse. Number six is uh, Chell U, or Cell Zero, by Apocalyptica. In the past few years, I've listened to a bunch of instrumental metal, especially one band that everyone keeps recommending to me, Animals as Leaders. When I listen to this kind of music, when I listen to bands such as Animals as Leaders, or Cloud Kicker, or Pelican, when I listen to, the, to one track, I'm like, fuck yeah, this is really good, let's listen to another track. And by the end of the second track, I'm like, okay, now I'm kind of bored now. And I don't think I've ever listened to an instrumental metal album from start to finish ever in my life before 2020 that has changed now because this album has something catchy about it i don't know if you remember but at some point there was like some video game journalists who were talking about the the hookability rating as stupid as it sounds this album has a high hookability uh rating in my opinion really great blend of thrash metal and symphonic metal. Of course, you can tell the influence of Metallica. There are huge fans of Metallica. Their first album, if you don't know, was just covers of Metallica played by four cellos, because uh, that's the gimmick of Apocalyptica. They play heavy metal, but instead of using guitars, they have cellos. There's a solid thrash metal foundation that is reminiscent of Metallica, even in some details like the, the use of the wah pedal, uh, that they do in this album sounds a lot like the way Metallica uses the wah pedal. But clearly, to me, it sounds like Apocalyptica has finally, ironically, found their own voice. And a lot of times in the past, their music sounded somewhat derivative. But this, it's really, I think they finally found the recipe. And yeah... As ironic as it is for a band that does not have a singer, Apocalyptica finally found their own voice and it is great. Uh, the, the melodies are really good, the riffs are really good. And in my opinion, fantastic album from start to finish. 
hookability rating, uh, 9.5 out of 10, I guess. Number five, uh, you know how sometimes, like, you had, before the virus, before our lives changed, you know, the st kind of stuff that used to happen in the past. Uh, well, like, you had um, a good night at the pub uh, with your friends, and, like, drank a lot of pints, and you come home, you're a little drunk, and on the way home, you go in front of McDonald's, and you buy, like, a Big Mac or two or three, and, like, you get back home and you eat it on the side of your bed, and uh, it's trashy, of course, but it's also really satisfying in a way that is hard to explain. Well, this album is like that. This album is, in my opinion, very British. Like, it struck me, the sound struck me as extremely British. It reminded me especially of The Prodigy. Uh, it's kind of a modern version of The Prodigy. It reminded me also of uh, Basement Jacks. Lots of similarities. This album has, has a fantastic amount of energy. It's like so energetic. It's so danceable. It's kind of like a nuclear reactor musically. The one thing that is a bit weird about it is the um, vocals. Like there's a bunch of people who are invited to sing on there. And a lot of them sound exactly like the guy uh, who is not hot. You probably remember that meme. Man, man's not hot. Uh, two plus two is four minus one. That's three quick maths. You know, the thing will scrap. Pop, 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 ca, ca. Scribby, etc. Uh, a lot of vocalists on this album sound exactly like this. At, at the beginning, I found it like a little bit embarrassing. Because I couldn't figure out if it was genuine or ironic. But after a few listens, I was, don't give a shit anymore. Because music is so fucking good. There's a bunch of times where Joyride uses gunshots in, in the beats. And I, I can tell you by experience that it's fucking hard to do. To make the, the gunshot sound as not a gunshot that is slapped on top of the music. But as really an element of the percussion and it's like joyride manages to to make the gun be like really one of the elements of the drums and uh, it's beautifully made and there's something kind of paradoxical about it because you, you you have this really well i said trashy and i'm gonna stand by it but also it's very refined in a way that it's uh with the like the mix the effects the vocals, uh, despite the weirdness of the performance, you can tell there's a lot of work put into them, like the effects. Uh, uh, there's a lot of, yeah, in, in, the, in the mix, in the way the music is made, there's a lot of attention to detail, a lot of little effects, a bit of foley in the drums, and that adds so much. If you enjoy feeling like you're being kind of assaulted by the bass, this album is for you. The next album on the list, uh, also unexpected for me. This album is like very textured. These songs are like textures, yeah, I would say. It reminds me uh, a bit of the Suprematist uh, paintings of Kazimir Malevich, or as the... Um, like the blue stuff of um, Yves Klein. It's very very atmospheric it's almost like um cinematic or there's something that is weirdly visual about it this guy makes music like one paints and you really feel like you dive into it it's immersive you feel like some kind of immersion it's like being like i don't know like in a jungle or under the ocean or you know it gives you this kind of feel this kind of mood and uh, that's the best way I believe I can describe it. It's ambient, drony, noisy, kind of minimalist music. And if you like that kind of stuff, pff, this is like a treat. This is a gem. Number three. I want to say 
This is the kind of album that the Deftones could have made if they had continued making good albums. For me, the last really good uh, Deftones album is Saturday Night Wrist. But that's besides the point. The point being, like, if you like Deftones, if you like that kind of music, you're gonna fucking love loathe it's very moody it's very heady it has this really nice combination of airy vocals and really fat guitars some guitar riffs in there are so heavy like the the riff at the beginning of gourd at the end of the intro when the song really starts it's so heavy it's incredible uh, at the same time they've got some really pretty synth pads and, and vocals it is an excellent alternative metal album if you like the deftones you are gonna love this and even if you don't you probably should check it out anyway um, if you like rock or metal even a little there's probably a song for you in there so there's, there's a, a nice amount of diversity and there are some songs that are quite soft and some songs that go really hard i like when an album has variety like this i really appreciate that i would advise you to maybe just listen to the song screaming just at the beginning it's just guitar and drums and what the guitar does is so fucking good and you're gonna be hooked up right away I i'm sure and now we are so close to the top. We're at number two. Wow, this was perhaps the biggest surprise of the year for me. There is one very clear influence that is Magma. If you know Magma, especially albums like Udu Voodoo or Mechanic Destructive Commando, this is clearly the inspiration number one. But it's more than this. Uh, of course, it sounds a, a lot like Magma, like uh, also similar bands like Univers Zero. King Crimson is also clearly one of the main inspirations for this album. Bella Bartok, also clearly one of the inspirations. Uh, Igor Stravinsky um, and maybe Meshuga. You're probably thinking, what the fuck? Yeah, these things should not go together. That was also my reaction the first time I listened to this album. It's a blend of things that probably should not go together, but they do. These guys make all the pieces of the puzzle fit together and they created something that absolutely fucking blew my mind. This album felt like a slap in the face. The first time I listened to it, I was like, I didn't know this could exist. And I'm so glad it does, that someone created it. It's like a prog version of video game boss music. Uh, it reminded me of, the, of boss music or battle music from a lot of games, Dark Souls, uh, Legend of Zelda, uh, Bioshock even more, sounds a lot of like the Bioshock battle music at some point, and also some strong Diablo vibes. Uh, there's a song, I believe it's called Papal Stain, and when it starts, there's like it sounds like Diablo. It's like this Matt Willman vibe. And it's it's hard to describe and it's hard to compare because I've, I've in my life heard so few things that even remotely resemble this. Uh, I would say maybe the band Combat Astronomy sounds a little bit like this. The musicians on there are so good. Of course, there's J.G. Thirlwell and Simon Stinland. They play a lot of instruments on this album. They're both very talented. There's Morgan Ogren on drums. You probably know Morgan Ogren as the drummer from uh, Devin Townsend. He's been playing with Devin Townsend for a bunch of years now, but he has a very impressive resume. I'm gonna put some faces in here. Uh, uh, people who he has worked for or with. Other people on there seem to be like complete noobs. Uh, very talented, of course, but with no career as of yet. I think that maybe contributes to the freshness of the, of the music. I'm not sure. I believe anyone who enjoys music would enjoy this album. There's so much stuff that happens in there. There's so much ingredients that have been thrown into the cauldron and the resulting soup is so delicious. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the 
Wiener! Who is number one? Who is number one? Who won 2020? And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you right now, it is Hayley Williams with Pedals for Armor. Probably a bunch of you are raising eyebrows right now. Like, isn't that the chick from Paramore? The band that is like kind of a watered down version of Sum 41 or Blink 182? Yeah, I thought it was the, someone with the same name. Because I listened to the album and she doesn't sound the same at all. She sounds like a completely different person. I had apprehensions before getting into the album. Because I don't really like Paramore. But damn, it's incredible, the growth. This is kind of the theme of the album, so it really plays out. The the character development of Hayley Williams, and especially her, her voice and songwriting skills. Holy shit, the range she has on this album is very, very impressive. The talent, vocal talent, she has on this album uh, was completely unexpected for me. And it's only a part of what makes this album great because the music is also really really nice there's some great bass lines the bass is so tasty on most of the songs it gives this really wonderful foundation to the songs the drums are also really good you would think that this kind of music would have like boring drums that would be like just the same beats over and over again but there's so much subtlety in the drums so much little stuff that is added in Little foley, little effects. This is one of the rare occasions where I, I really like everything. I'm kind of picky musically, and I'm kind of hard to please. So finding one album where I like everything from start to finish, that's like that's an event for me. That's less than once a year it happens. And the, in this album, I like everything. I love. The way it's written i love the way it's mixed the mix is so good everything in this album is excellent the guitars are like simple subdued in the background but excellent the bass is like a solid foundation that is very important in every song and it is excellent and the drums are also quite simple with there's so much subtlety, so much attention to detail. The attention to detail is really one of the strong suits of this album. The one thing I had a little difficulty with at the beginning were the lyrics, because I was I was not sure what was going on, but like I, I read some interviews and it helped me understand the context, the, the meanings of all of this. And this is not the kind of stuff I usually do. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, the cover, the album cover is it's weird. Like, what does this mean? I looked at the album cover and I was like, ah, this album cover, I don't like how it looks. It's, it's just weird. What are these um, black squares? The fuck this is? I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover or in this case, an album. I've listened to many albums where the cover was like beautiful and looked really nice and the music was shit. So I know it doesn't mean much. Like, yeah, uh, it was one of the things that maybe hesitates to uh, start listening to it, that cover. And I was like, what the fuck are these squares? And then I read when she married her ex-husband, she had his initials tattooed on her knuckles. And uh, when they divorced, she had the letters covered by black squares. So since her divorce is one of the central themes in the album, uh, something like this and like the black squares um, that represent her beginning of her new life. And like there's like it forms a path that goes up on her face. And it's like this is really an example of how I connected with this album on a level that is not normal for me and how much the whole thing resonated with me because usually this is the kind of shit I do not give one flying fuck about. Going the extra mile and looking for information on what the cover 
art means and stuff like this, reading interviews, uh, watching videos. This is the kind of stuff I never do. And this album, I don't know, I liked it so much that I, I wanted to know a lot of stuff about it. I wanted to learn more about the context, the meanings, stuff that is maybe hidden, some Easter eggs. Who is she talking about in the lyrics? Some stuff that I've learned uh, that I think is kind of interesting is her first album with Paramore. I don't remember what's uh, the name of the album. Everything we know is collapsing, something like, something like this. And the central theme of this album was the divorce of her parents. And now she started her solo career and uh, her divorce is one of the central themes of this album. And I think it's interesting because it's all about new beginnings, but also how everything is a cycle and things like repeat themselves and things change and things stay the same. You know, this is for me the album of the year because of all I've just said. It's just so well made, but it's not overproduced. There's a lot of attention to detail and there's a lot of small details that are important, but there's nothing that is too much. There's nothing that feels extra. Everything has a place. The voice, I know I've said it already, but the voice of Hayley Williams is incredible in there. The fucking range she has. Just listen to the intro of Watch Me While I Bloom. The first line, she goes really hard. And then the second line, she goes really soft. And then the third line, she starts hard, but she goes soft and at the end of the line. It is just impressive. It is an incredible amount of talent. To me, this album is like an example of excellence. And this concludes, of course, our top 10. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't hesitate to leave some comments. Of course, like and share. Of course, see you in a week or two for uh, another video on all the honorable mentions. The albums that were not excellent enough to be put in this top 10, but still were really good and I believe deserve to be talked about. One word for the end. Peace.